video we're going to discuss the cloud data store that we'll be using for our applications uh, for the rest of this course. Um, cloud data store is not quite a SQL database. It's going to work a little bit differently, but it's also going to be a pretty simple API that we can use to query, store data, uh, update things. And it, it'll be a, a little bit simpler than learning the entire structured query language that we might need to use if we're going to use a traditional database. So Cloud Data Store is a NoSQL storage system. This more or less means that our queries are going to operate a little bit differently. We're not going to have the guarantees of a relational database management system, uh, but you know it will have a pretty basic API that we're, we're able to use and we're able to perform our data storage and our lookups, uh, our queries pretty effectively. Uh, it does have scalable atomic transactions, and we do we are able to achieve consistency through key lookup. So we're typically going to use a key uh, to look up the different uh, entities that we will store. It also has eventual consistency, so we can use queries uh, to, to make sure that you know as we query, uh, you know once the data has settled or once you know once we've had a chance to, to replicate appropriately, we should have uh, consistency in our stored data. And it does support transactions, so you can uh, do multiple updates and you know uh, commit those as a single transaction. Um, a couple of terms that we'll need to think about when we get into Cloud Data Store. One is entity. So an entity is the thing that we need to store. It's you know some some particular object. Uh, you know if you're used to databases, you can kind of think of as an entity as a table, but it might be a little bit more uh, appropriate to think of it as an object. Um, basically, an entity is going to be a key value, uh, sort of like a dictionary uh, in a lot of ways. Um, we also will have namespaces, so you probably won't need to use namespaces for the purposes of this course, but if you do want to use a namespace, this allows you to segment entities into different places. So perhaps you have a namespace for one particular thing, like maybe you have a namespace for users, maybe you have a namespace for, uh, you know, for like site data. Uh, you could you could kind of segment that way, but as, as the slide says, you probably won't need that for simple projects. Uh, kind really identifies the type of an entity. Uh, so if you have an entity of a certain kind, we would kind of think about that as like a data type for the storage that we're using. Um, a key, uh, which you would have as an identifier for the entity. Now these can be string or int, and one of the things that, that trips up a lot of people is that you know this this identifier being a string or being an int actually means that an int that is like seven or a string that is seven uh, are actually going to be two separate entities because that type is actually going to uh, like the entity's um, key. Uh, it's the type of that key defines uh, some of the uniqueness. So if you have a, a string or a number, even those the even though those may look the same, they may be different uh, keys. So you have to keep that in mind. I, I find that, you know, usually about once a semester, somebody gets tripped up on this particular thing. So it's definitely worth calling out. Uh, we also have ancestors, which ancestors, you know, the, the, it kind of implies, uh, you know, if you're used to object oriented programming, it kind of implies like an inheritance relationship. And I, I kind of find the terminology a little bit cute, uh, confusing. I think that ancestors, um, in this case, are more like an owner. It's almost like a, like a folder structure or a directory structure on your operating system. So, you know, you can think of like a forum might have several posts in the forum. So the forum would be the ancestor and the post might be uh, the uh, child entity. Um, you probably won't need to use this. You can probably get away with just using single entities, but you know, just in case you encounter it, ancestors. And then descendants would be entities that are owned by the ancestor. So you know, in that forum uh, post case, uh, the forum itself would be an ancestor. The uh, the post would be a descendant of that of that forum. So. A really simple example. This is gonna this is gonna be the kind of code that you need to write to to uh, store data and to update data. The first thing you'll need is a data store client, and you can see that on the first line here. We're just using the data store. Uh, you know, we're gonna import data store, and uh, we're gonna create a client using this line. Um, so it's, it's pretty straightforward. You know, data store client is all you need to do to get access to that client. We're going to have a kind or a type. Now Python doesn't have true constants, but it's generally good to kind of use this as a, you know, like use a, a variable as a constant to define uh, the kind of entity that you're going to use. Um, you also want to think about an ID for that, you know, so you can create that uh, on your own. You can also have the data store generate, it, generate one for you. So I, I believe that in, uh, generated IDs are going to be integers in the uh, data store. But if you want to create your own or you want to assemble one or you want to have an ID or a key that has some meaning, uh, you can write that yourself as a string. Uh, 
Um, so we're gonna create a key. So you can see here on this line that says create a data store key for your entity. We're going to use the client uh, to construct a key. Uh, it's gonna have the kind or the type for that entity. And then, uh, you know, the, the ID or, you know, whatever, you know, whatever that key, uh, that value is gonna be. Uh, we can also give it parameters. You can see here, once we create uh, the entity, data store dot entity, uh, we're going to use that key as that entity's key. And then we're gonna set a, a property on that particular entity. So you can see we're setting ta uh, the description property to this particular uh, buy milk. And uh, again, that's kind of sort of like a dictionary type of structure. So uh, you can kind of see how we're using that like a dictionary. And then we save it, which you just use data store, uh, dot, or data store client dot put and that will save that particular entity. And we're gonna get through an example of this in just a, a few videos, we'll, we'll walk through the code. Um, now, data store does provide an ID, and that's actually worth dwelling on for just a moment, because what, what you're gonna get there is a globally unique identifier. And uh, you know, since data store is distributed, that means that ultimately, this has to work across all of the different instances, all of the different places where your data store is running, uh, and it has to be able to generate these IDs. So if you're just using one computer and you just have one system where you're generating IDs, you could just move through uh, a synchronized uh, queue of IDs. So you could start with one and then two, and then three and then four but that would be really that would be limited if you wanted to expand uh, so if you have two different machines that are both generating IDs they both have you know you could have one start at one and one start at say five million and then you could start generating them one by one but eventually you'll run out of IDs in that in that uh, approach so Trying to go even further than that, if you have 10 machines, now you're starting to segment those, it's gonna get very complicated. So typically what uh, what you do if you need to generate a globally unique identifier uh, is you have to incorporate some other information. So without a centralized system, and if you think about this, a centralized system for managing IDs means that Anywhere in the world, your, your application would have to send a message. It would have to send a, an API call or something to retrieve a new ID, which might introduce a lot of latency as you move around, as your users uh, are, are uh, using your application around the world. So we, we can't necessarily just have a centralized server for generating IDs. That's not going to be very efficient. And, you know, we could segment the, the, the space of IDs, but that could get very difficult to manage. So typically what we'll do is we'll include location, time, and some randomness to generate uh, these global unique IDs. Um, basically what we do here is, you know, you, you might have a, a location that you could identify as perhaps an IP address. Uh, you'll have time, you know, so like if uh, you have current, uh, your system's current time, that could be milliseconds and then some randomness. You know, generally I think that the, if you use math.random uh, in, in Java or, you know, uh, random.random in Python, I believe that that has about 64 bits of, uh, of different values. Um, you know, maybe it's 63 bits, but it's a lot of different, uh, different possibilities. So the chance that one particular server in one location at one millisecond generating more than that amount of data uh, and running into a collision is extraordinarily unlikely. So, you know, coordinating centrally, too much latency. Uh, if you don't include the timestamp, you know, that eventually you will run into a collision because you're not advancing over time. And if you don't include that location, you're probably going to have overlapping times at some point. So uh, usually if you're going to try to generate something like this, it's good to think about, you know, some specific uh, location or some specific value to that machine, uh, some particular time that you would use, and then some randomness. So this, uh, this all sort of happens automatically. You don't have to think too much about it uh, when you're using integer ID, automatically provided integer IDs in Cloud Data Store. But it is something good to know in case you ever have to generate these for your own purposes. So uh, entities support uh, several different data types. You know, when you're creating these, uh, the, the properties for each one of these entities, you can use an array, you can use a Boolean, you can use a date time, which will be stored automatically. You can use a float, uh, you can use an int, you can use another key, so you can store keys as properties. Uh, this can allow you to do some, some weird things with uh, references. Um, generally speaking for, you know, simple applications, you won't have to think too much about references uh, or, you know, like having one particular type of data reference another other type of data, uh, but it's possibility. And then you also have strings. Um, 
Typically what I find for you know people who are getting started in this, you start with pretty basic data storage. Generally that's gonna be just a few entities that are not necessarily directly related to each other. Um, but you know you might be able to use all of this. So if you do have, wanna get further into it, there is documentation here. Uh, you can take a look at all of the different uh, API uh, calls that are available for, for the Python uh, doc, or API within uh, Google Data Store or Cloud Data Store. So I think that that'll give you some insights if you wanna do a little bit more than just create an entity save that entity, update it, etc. Uh, so that will be a good introduction, hopefully, to, uh, to what you can do with Cloud Data Store. Um, we're going to get into a little bit further what you can do with querying, and then we'll work, look at an example. And uh, that should allow you to get started with uh, not only creating an application and having some basic logic and being able to generate HTML, but also storing some of this user data or storing information in some type of data store so that it's persistent and you can call it again later. Thank you for watching.